Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David McCorkle, the Lord Lieutenant, who is His Majesty the King's personal representative in County Antrim. We come together this afternoon following the passing of our late Sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II. Our sadness at this time is shared by people across the globe as we remember with affection and gratitude the lifetime of service given by our longest reigning monarch. But the basis on which our monarchy is built has ensured that through the centuries the crown has passed in unbroken line of succession. Today's ceremony marks the formal proclamation to the people of County Antrim of the beginning of our new king's reign. It is now my duty to introduce, introduce the High Sheriff of County Antrim, Mr John Lockett, OBE, who will read the accession proclamation. Whereas it has pleased Almighty God to call to his mercy our late Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth II of blessed and glorious memory, by whose decease the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is solely and rightfully come to the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George. We, therefore, the Lords spiritual and temporal of this realm, and members of the House of Commons, together with other members of Her Late Majesty's Privy Council, and representatives of the realms and territories, aldermen and citizens of London, and others, do now, hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late Sovereign of Happy Memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege, Lord Charles III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience with humble affection, beseeching God by whom kings and queens do reign to bless his majesty with long and happy years to reign over us. Given at St James's Palace, this 10th day of September, in the year of our Lord, 2022. God save the King! God save the King! Thank you, Lord Lieutenant, High Sheriff, and welcome fellow mayors, members, distinguished guests, and everyone who has joined us here today or watching later at home. As Mayor of Antrim Newton Abbey, it is an honour to be here today in our borough to hear the County Antrim Proclamation announcing the new King. Yesterday in London, King Charles III made his declaration and signed an oath to serve as our King. I know our communities across County Antrim will wish him well as he takes on the role of Head of State. Today is of course tinged with sadness too, as we are here because Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II passed away on Thursday the 8th of September. Having given over 70 years service across eight decades, the country is united in mourning at her loss. Her eldest son Charles is mourning the loss of a beloved mother as he steps up to take on his duties as the new king. The example set for him by his mother, Queen Elizabeth, will no doubt equip him with all the skills needed to lead our country in the days, weeks, months and years ahead. Her long life of selfless service will never be seen again, but as an example to us all. I have no doubt King Charles would take that inspiration from that example. And on behalf of this borough and the county of Antrim, we wish him well and pledge our loyalty. Long may he reign over us. God save 
the king. God save the king. Lord Lieutenant, High Sheriff, Mr. Murr, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let us come to a time of reflection and prayer as we give thanks to God for the life of our late Queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, as we pray for the royal family and we pray for our new king. With we as a nation mourn the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We come to give thanks for her life and Christian witness and pray for the royal family and our new king, His Majesty King Charles. Before we pray, let me read words spoken by, by our late queen. I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give my best in all that the days bring and to put my trust in God. And then on the 3rd of August of this year, Queen Elizabeth II spoke these words. Throughout my life, the message and teachings of Christ have been my guide and in them I find hope. So let us together bow our heads in prayer as we give thanks for the life and witness of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Prayer of thanks for the life of Her Majesty the Queen. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, at these sad times as we, the people of the United Kingdom, along with the peoples of the Commonwealth and throughout the world, give you thanks for the life and Christ Christian witness of Queen Elizabeth II. We give thanks to you for the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth II, for her 70 years of service, which she faithfully performed sacrificially with grace, humility, and love. She has consistently shown us the values of goodness, courage, and strength. We thank you for her genuine personal faith, which was seen in her life, demonstrated by the fruit of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for the hope she carried and for the devoted leadership she demonstrated so often for the time she had gave to other people. Thank you, Jesus, for your servant. Servant's life lived a life of faith, love and hope. A true follower of Jesus, who on occasions pointed others to you and lived out her Christian faith daily. Today, for our Queen, it is absent from the body and present with her Lord. Lord, we give you thanks. We now pray for the royal family. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our royal family, and we ask that you, the God of all comfort, we bring comfort at time of deep sorrow and grief. As they mourn the passing of a much-loved mother, grandmother and great-grandmother. We especially think of the Queen's four children. Lord, we ask that you sustain them with your all-sufficient grace. May they experience your love, peace and compassion, knowing that you care for them. Your word says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, I pray that promise for the Queen's family, for her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, and the wider family circle. Holy Spirit, the Comforter, do your work today and in the days, weeks, and months that lie ahead. Lord, hear our prayer. Now we pray for our new King. O Lord, our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, your word instructs us to pray for kings and all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. We come before you in obedience to your word to pray for our new king, his majesty, King Charles III. O Lord, our heavenly Father, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who does from this thy gracious throne behold all who dwell upon the earth. We beseech you with thy favour to behold our king, his majesty, King Charles III. We ask that you save him and fill him with your Holy Spirit and grace, that he will always incline to your will and walk in your ways. O Lord, as King Charles III, your servant, serves this nation and the Commonwealth, along with the Queen Consort, I ask that, your that you strengthen them and give them good health. May they know your presence with them daily. 
We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've got a very rainy day, but from one rain today to another rain just starting, I think it's time for the people of County Antrim to make their voice heard. I know King Charles III will not be with us till tomorrow, but let's see if we can shake him up a wee bit and welcome him to County Antrim. Three cheers. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Thank you.